we're now inside of uh, Dataflow Gen 2, and we've been tasked with a really simple scenario. We have two data sources. We want to combine that data and load the output or the result to a lake house. The first data source is actually an Excel file. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to simply drag and drop it into the Dataflow Gen 2 canvas. It will effectively jump into the connector for the Excel workbook, upload it, and let me connect to it directly from the uploaded file. Once it finishes uploading and it connects to that file that's being uploaded, I can click Next, and I can see the contents inside of that Excel workbook. What I'm going to be finding is simply one workbook with one simple table, one sheet. That sheet contains some discount data for some invoices that we have. And those invoices are in a separate data set. So I'm gonna simply connect to this sheet that I have. So I'm gonna click on Create. And that's gonna create a new query in Power Query. And this is the Power Query editor. Now with my sheet one, which I can rename. And I'm gonna rename this to be simply Discounts. And I can see the diagram view in here and the data preview being computed at the bottom to show me what are the contents of that table. Now with the discounts data in place, let's go ahead and bring the invoice data that I have. I'm going to click on the Get Data button in the Home tab of the ribbon. I'm going to find now the O Data Connector because my data is in O Data. So I'm going to find this super simple with this new modern get data experience. I'm going to click on all data. All I have to do here is just input the URL to that all data service. In my case, I've already connected to this before. So that's why I see that there's a connection already selected for me. I can click on next. And now the navigator window will show up and will give me all of the objects available inside of that data source. The one that I'm going to be looking for is the invoices table. So I can click on invoices, put a check mark on it, see a data preview of it, and then simply click on create to land that data as a new query inside of the Power Query editor. Let's do a transformation on this invoices table. I do not need all of the columns, and we can take advantage of how easy to use Power Query is. So I can simply scroll all the way to the column that I do not want, which in this case is the required date. I can right-click this column and select the option that reads Remove Columns. I could have done more transformations, and it's pretty straightforward to do them with Power Query through the UI. But for this scenario, I will only be doing this one. And the next step is to merge the data. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this plus sign that I see in the diagram view. And I'm going to find this transformation that I want to do, which is called Merge. I want to merge the data between the invoices table and the discounts table. So I'm going to click where it says Merge Queries as New. This will bring a new dialog called the Merge dialog. It has the left table as invoices. And for the right table, I can click on this dropdown and select Discounts. I could have known in advance what columns will be used to pair or match between those two tables. Or I could actually go to the suggested uh, mapping in the top right, and it will give me some suggestions as to what columns could be mapped to uh, the different tables, the both of those tables. And in this case, I see that we have ship country to ship country and ship postal code to ship postal code. So this suggestion is perfect. This is the one that I'm looking for. So I'm going to select it, and it automatically does the mapping that I need it. Amazing. It already has the join kind that I need, and everything just seems to be working perfectly. We even have a preview of the selecting matches uh, between those two tables. So this is just perfect. This is exactly what I needed. So to move forward, all I have to do is simply click on OK. And this transformation, uh, based on how we do it, will create a new query. This will be called merge, and we'll have the result of this transformation, just a single step that we call source. To unpack uh, the columns uh, between the left table and the right table, I can go here to this 
new column that we see, which is discounts, click on this little icon of the opposite arrows, and all I need from this new column or the table from the right, which is the discounts, is just a discount. So I'm gonna expand that, and I'll create a new step where this transformation will happen. And I will have all of the discounts right in here. And with this information, I can have the discount number one, which is this one, and this one will be called discount. All right, so I'm gonna double click here and just do a rename of this particular column. So we have the original discount and we have something nice, which could be uh, an even better discount. And this is gonna be called the discount override. So it could be the 20% of the final price. So we're gonna go ahead and now just simply load this data to the destination. So we don't need uh, to load these three queries. The one query that we want to load is simply this merge query. We could potentially rename this to be, for example, output. So I'm just gonna rename this to be output. And I'm gonna add a data destination. At the bottom of the query settings, I can see the plus sign to add a data destination. I'm gonna load this data to a lake house that I have. And I'm gonna go through this process to connect to that lake house that I have. The name of that lake house is called Demo Lake House. So I'm just gonna find this and I'm gonna be prompted with the navigator experience for the lake house connector. I'm just gonna try to find that Demo Lake House. So this is in our workspace that I call Ignite Demo. And within that, I have the Demo Lake House. So this is the Demo Lake House. I can put this as invoice, discounts, so there we go. Click on next. And now we'll be seeing a new settings uh, specifically to load the data to that destination. The first choice that we have is the update method. Do we want to replace the data from that table? It's gonna be a new table, but for future approaches, it could simply be and a pin or replace. For this one, it's gonna be a replace. And then we're gonna be creating all of those new columns. For the order dates and ship dates, instead of a date time zone, we're gonna save this as a date time. And we can do all of these transformations right within this dialog. We still have one simple scenario that we have to solve. And this is due to the lake house being used as a data destination. It cannot have column names that contain spaces. So in this case, the discount override that we created cannot look with this space. But we do have this fix it button that I'm gonna click here to fix that situation. And what's gonna happen is that at the destination, this space will be replaced with an underscore. So it will actually be discount underscore override. And with all those fixes in place, I can simply click on Save Settings, go back to the Power Query Editor, and publish my data flow so that I can actually refresh.